Jim Cropfeld, Miss Budweiser, is, of course, with 400 points, sitting in the catbird seat. Here's Ron Snyder. They called him a bad guy last time out. He'll be a little more careful, but not that much more careful. <laughs> and here is Jerry Hopp. He did pretty well in that KZOK machine rock band boat, and he's hoping that he can get enough points to get considered for that final heat. Ron Armstrong and the Kawaguchi travel driving the oldest boat in the pits, but even at 10,000 pounds, this boat still smokes and goes hard. And Tom the Eighth, uh, he's looking, of course, for the time when this turbine breaks loose and really is able to run as strong as it is capable of. And Steve Reynolds, well, he thinks he's already there. The question is, can he keep it going and get into the final and then beat the uh, competition? He's got a job cut out for him as well. But I got a feeling, gentlemen, up there on the barge that uh, the uh, first two guys, the, the top end of this heat, and the Budweiser and the uh, Tosti Osti will choose each other up for about, oh, maybe uh, three quarters of a lap. Beyond that, I think they're going to settle back and not try to break anything this early. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think they're probably going to try to size each other up and see how well their boat is performing against the other guys here and they're going to size themselves up for the final heat. It'd be fun for them each uh, to win this one, but uh, the last one is the only one that the paycheck comes John, from. John, let me ask you, if you were driving like the American Speedy Printing, perhaps, would you uh, try to put some pressure on these guys and force them to do more than they want to do in this heat? You bet. That's really about the only choice that he's got right now. He's got to go hard. He's got to he's put himself in a must-win situation here. And if he can go out and make one of those other guys run hard to either keep up with him or attempt to beat him, and they break something then, uh, and they don't finish, then he's done a good job and made them do you know some things that they didn't want to do and put himself in a position to make the final heat here. Okay, we'll find out, Don. Here they come to you. Up in the north third is the Budweiser slowing way down. Keep in mind, now with the Griffin engine, he can afford to slow down somewhat. It's a little tougher for the turbines to get fired up if they have to slow down and they're early on the clock. Jim Cropfeld and the Budweiser staying up, hugging the buoys, taking his time at the 20-second mark. He's in pretty good shape. Coming around wide, a number of the boats will try to identify them now as they come down. We reach the 13-second mark. The Budweiser still in lane number one, American Speedy Printing. Guess who? Ron Snyder coming on hard now right to there. lane number three. He's going to be right on the button. Four seconds, three. Oh, it's going to oh, be close. Oh, it's real close. Real, real close. close. Look who's on the inside, the Budweiser and the U-80. That owned by Bob Patterson, Juan Armstrong driving that one in American Speedy putting out in lane number three. But Jim Krupfeld of the beautiful start of the Budweiser going into that south turn. You see the U-80. That, of course, is the Kawaguchi Travel and American Speedy Printing. Here comes the Tosti Osti with Steve Reynolds. But that boat with Jim Krupfeld out of Cincinnati, Ohio in first place coming around the exit buoy and heading down the main chute along the log boom. A lot of traffic now as they come past that buoy and head down the back chute with the Budweiser smooth sailing for the Bud. Let's try to identify the leaders now. In second place is the American Speedy Printing behind the Budweiser. The Bud with about a rooster tail lead a little bit more. The U-80 coming up coming on the inside on against American Speedy Printing. He's taking over second place. Ron Armstrong in second place and a Kawaguchi travel. That baby weighs 10,800 pounds. It's the heaviest boat on the circuit by far. He has moved into second place. But where's the Tosti Asti? She's in third place. Moving Don, up right okay. in the rooster tail. He's behind the rooster tail as they come around the turn. The Budweiser still in lane number one. Jim Kropfeld, national point leader, coming down, about to complete lap number one. What a traffic jam back there. We got four Lots boats bugs. fighting away. Great racing on the part of these boats. The Tosti on the outside. American Speedy putting on the right of your screen. Here they come down. The Budweiser completing lap number one. In the lead at 116 miles per hour. Second place is going to American Speedy putting. Third place looks like Tosti Osti. Look at the Kawaguchi has moved up and, and taken Ron Armstrong. Second. He's on the inside on lane number one right as they go into the south turn. A three-boat race, four boats. Let's call it four. The Budweiser on the he is out in front still. Let's see. Okay, the Bud's out in front trying to get the right angle, but we got four rooster tails right behind him battling it out for second, third, and fourth. Steve's going to come on real strong here. That's, that's one of the, the best points of the race course for this uh, Tosti Austin boat is in the turn. Look You're right, get John. the turn real well and accelerate real hard down oh, the back yes. straight away. Moving into second place, that man right there, Steve Reynolds in the Tosti Austin in second place. That's where he'd like to be. 600 points would easily put him into the final. In third place, on the inside the light all-star. That's the best that Tom East won in quite some time. He's in third place. We got two turbines at second and third. The U-80 behind the rooster tail of the Tosti and the light all-star. Going up into the north turn. A little choppy there with the water coming off the log boom. The Budweiser still in first place. You see the difference now. Look at the pack giving chase to the Budweiser. When I say pack, I mean three boats. The Budweiser in first place with Cropfeld, number one. National points lead. Trying to pick up some more here and, of course, advance on to the final. Let's get a lap speed now for the Budweiser and the 
Tusty is now giving chase to the Budweiser. A rooster tail lead for the Bud over the Tusty. Speed 114 for the Budweiser. Four second lead now for the Budweiser over the Tusty Osti. And the light all-star right behind Steve Reynolds about a rooster tail lead in third place. Fourth place is the U80 with Ron Armstrong. The Kawaguchi travel. American Speedy way back in fifth. And the KZOK machine band in sixth place. We have six boats running still. The Budweiser in first place. Jim Cropfeld had 102 temperature last night, but he is able to race today, and he is in first place already with 400 points from Heat 1A. There's the dist dist distance rather between the Budweiser and that man, Steve Reynolds, and the turbine-powered Tosti Osti, owned by Steve Woomer out of Kent, Washington. Steve Reynolds in second, the Budweiser in first place, the grand old lady, they call it the love boat now. They had a wedding on that boat yesterday, you might recall. Man, that was something. <laughs> I'd never seen a bud with balloons and flowers on it before, but it was beautiful in a strange sort of way. Well, That's I'll tell the you, Don, the, the, uh, Mike. this light all-star is beginning to show what it's going to have in the very near future. It's running beautifully. He is in third place. As you see, the first place boat, Jim crops out of the Budweiser. The light all-star, also a Lazaro design boat. Jim Lazaro design boat and built by him. The Budweiser, though, in first place, completing lap number three is Jim Crossfeld at a speed. Oh, he's boosting it up a little, 119 miles per hour at a five-second lead over that man, the Tosti Osti, and Steve Reynolds, the Vietnam veteran. I think awarded. Steve is going to try to run hard enough here to, to keep the Budweiser uh, with, within his grasp, at least, but try to push him hard enough in hopes that uh, maybe that old reliable Griffin will uh, spit some parts out. Well, you know, I think, I John, that, that, that uh, Tom Deeth may be thinking about the same thing for both of those guys out front of him. That's right. Because he's staying on the throttle. Too. All right, back to the Budweiser. Keep in mind, though, gentlemen, they've got a different engine from every heat, and they've got their shop about five miles away from here, so they're in good shape engine-wise. A Budweiser in first, that man, Steve Reynolds and the Tosti Osti in second place, and in third place, another turbine, that being the light all-star with Tom Neath aboard and the boat based out of Houston, Texas, Tom out of Detroit. The Budweiser going up into the north, th north turn. There's your third place boat again with the heat waves coming out directly behind Tom with that strange exhaust system that they have. Rather unorthodox, but they feel it'll work. Again, the Budweiser coming around the north turn again from the helicopter. You see the Tosti Osti riding outside in lane number two. He'll be picking up another 300 points if he holds on to that position. The Budweiser and Jim Cropfeld. What a beautiful boat. It'll be retired next year. Bernie Little saying we're going turbine next year more than likely, but we'll wait and see. Completing lap number four, the Budweiser at a speed of 117.4 miles per hour. A seven-second lead over Reynolds now in the Tosti Osti. Reynolds completing lap number four at 114 miles per hour. He's in second place. Third place, the light all-star in Tom D. Speed of 110 miles per hour, 110.8. And those are your three leading boats. The Budweiser, what a beautiful boat. Let's face it, well, it's the winningest boat in the history of unlimited hydroplane racing. It deserves a grand retirement at the end of this year if they do indeed go either to a new boat with Griffins and or a new boat with turbines. Bernie Little, of course, has already bought up a number of turbine engines. He's preparing for the future, always looking ahead. That's why he's such a winner. 48 wins to be exact. That's right. All-time winning as owner. The Budweiser heading down the back chute as you see the log boom in the background. The gray waters from this overcast sky. The second place, Steve Reynolds. They're all on the final lap now here in Heat 2B, just trying to save the equipment. Third place to the light all-star, Tom Deeth. Tom, no points, of course, in the first heat, so he would get 225, not nearly enough to get into the final, but it's nice to see that boat running as well as it is here in Heat 2B. The Budweiser coming down, about to complete lap number five in Heat 2B. The Budweiser and Jim Krupfeld, another win for the Budweiser. 400 points, 800 for the day, the Bud and Jim Krupfeld. The KZOK machine man coming by. He was a lap boat. Second place now to Steve Reynolds. 300 points, 600 for the day for Steve Reynolds and the Tosti Osti. Third place, the light all-star. Not all that far behind him, as a matter of fact. Picking up 225 points. Well, gentlemen, we saw a nice little uh, bit of action there in the first couple of laps. We had four boats out there. Yep. Now, hopefully, the, the water is going to stay good like this, and we ought to have a real barn burner for the final heat. It appears that all the boats are, you know, running pretty well right now. The Tostiasi is, is showing a little bit of superiority through the turns uh, over the Miss Budweiser, but the Budweiser, it just does everything well. It accelerates real strong. It gets through the turns real well. It's got good top end, and as was shown in, in the start here, it offers a little bit of flexibility that some of the other guys don't have, where he can get out of the pedal for a long, long ways and, and still be able to, to get the boat speed back up in a hurry when he needs it. Of course, there are going to be little question but that Reynolds had more in it he just uh, he used as much as it was necessary and that's that's all you just saw the Kawaguchi finishing uh, 
getting fourth place, that being Ron Armstrong. And of course, the Budweiser. Boy, when that Kawaguchi is running strong and the water's just right at 10,000 yeah. pounds, she's still got a lot of beans in there, doesn't she? At American Speedy Printing. Ron Snyder, a tough day. It's been tough for him ever since Madison, Indiana. He was the national point leader after a couple of races. Steve Reynolds coming out of the boat, the Tosti. Boy, that's one beautiful sled. Of course, the Budweiser, Jim going out, running it. A lot of times when all these boats go out and they're from one side of the pits, they've got to simply go out and uh, rotate around and kind of just hang out in the water until there's time and there's room to get into their dock. Yeah, well, it's going to be take a number for Budweiser because yeah. the Light and the Osti are back now, and uh, and the <laughs> the Bud is still out on the race course, and there are two cranes on this side that are uh, appeared with, that they've uh, already been called for. So, right, so, well, what's running right now? The Coho or something? Cast a line while he's out there <laughs> bringing lunch. <laughs> well, what can you say about that boat? I mean, you should have seen the back end of that thing uh, up in Syracuse after testing. The driver, the prop shaft, looked you like mean a there piece was of one? spaghetti. Oh, it, it was hanging there. It was yeah. incredible. The strut was totally ripped apart. Bottom of the boat was ripped apart. And uh, then crew chief Dave Cully and that crew did a fabulous job of putting that baby back together and getting yeah. it in, in time for Evansville. You see Ron Armstrong looking back at his engine and the Kawaguchi Travel. Very, very heavy boat, but very durable. You might remember when that was the Vans PX, Don Campbell Food Service. That been a particular boat. boat, Don, it, that particular boat has probably the most pristine and powerful turbo Allison that's ever been built in it. In fact, Danny High, who's pitted next to it in the Executone, says, oh, I'd like to try that one and this one. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, uh, American Speedy did indeed jump the gun. I thought so, and I was half questioning whether Budweiser was there, too, but Bud was right on the money. Oh, that Last was, tick yep. of the clock. Excellent yeah, Coffee was right, right, on the, right on the money there on that start. He sure was. Okay, 800 points then for the Budweiser. Well, that's, uh, that uh, goes to show you, of course, uh, with the American Speedy printing with uh, Ronnie Snyder, if he is on the money, he is right on the money, but if he's not, that one tick always costs him. What? I've got to believe that the guys are having a tough time with their clocks and the clock over here on the start-finish line here out of the barge because it's totally different from the past. The course tends to go to the left away from the shoreline. That's right. I've heard a number of drivers this week talking about how difficult it is to see the pie chart or the pie clock they use here manually, yeah. their own clocks, and following the line of the uh, of the uh, buoys. And the referees have already said, hey, guys, if you veer outside, I'm going to call it on you, regardless of the makeup or the situation here. And particularly right. where the boats uh, have uh, traffic on their right. The right. guys on the inside haven't got a prayer. Here's some more goodies. I just got a release in my hand. The Kawaguchi Travel driven by Ron Armstrong, was disqualified from Heat 2B for cutting off the American Speedy Printing and driver Ron Snyder in the south turn. The Kawaguchi drifted out of his lane in the middle of the corner, forcing the American Speedy to go through his rooster tail. The American Speedy Printing was penalized one lap for jumping the gun at the start, so... Okay, now we got to figure out the points. <laughs> well, I know. You're going to need an 8.5 by 14 for this, I think. I'm sure making <laughs> a legal size size paper. My chart has just died and gone to heaven here. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of a penalty happens a lot on this particular race course. Like Don was saying, because the, the race course itself does tend to drift away from the line on the beach, it's kind of uh, disorienting out there at times. Well, when, when you get in traffic... One here when, you, uh, when we ran the Gold Cup. When uh, you get in traffic, John, and you're looking for those reference points that are familiar to you on this course, if you've raced it a lot of times, you don't know which to believe, the direction of the traffic or, or those uh, reference points. And, you and tend especially to because it's such a short distance from the exit pin of the upper turn up here to the starting line, the, the boats tend to get bunched up there. And when there's so much water in the air, a lot of times you can't see the buoy line. So the only thing you have to, to go on is the seat of your pants, your reflexes, and, and what you can see, which is the beach. And uh, like I say, in 1981, uh, Chip and Dean and myself got all tangled up down here, and there was all sorts of, you know, rumors going around that you did this, and I should have done that, and I would have been there if you could have done this. But uh, it, it is a real disorienting um, type of race course because, uh, like I say, the, the buoy line goes away from the starting clock, and especially right now it's tough because there's so many good boats out there and so many fast drivers and stuff that you've got to be looking at so many different things to see who's on the right side, who's on the left side, and uh, where am I going to be making my start. A lot of things to uh, to have to think about, and that does cause a, a lot of problems. Well, Jim Kropfeld was down there by Carlos for a moment, but he's about to go over for the little uh, heat uh, trophy presentation.